All right, what's poppin', people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video, which is, of course, about Chelsea transfers. I'm gonna go through some names, a lot of names, that Chelsea have been linked with, what it would mean if they came to Chelsea, and the likelihood of it happening, but one thing's for sure, Frank Lampard and Chelsea do mean business and they're looking to make movements this winter. There's some cold truths to swallow about certain players not coming, but there's also some very exciting prospects. And when you look at the reality of the situation, it does seem everything that will happen will be for the best. But if you are new to the channel, I wanna urge you there to subscribe to Football Therapy. Make sure you do click the bell notifications icon. Why not like the video? All right, let's get into it. So, Chelsea fans elated, the ban was lifted, and they're like, right, we've got loads of money to spend, which is true, Chelsea have generated a gargantuan amount of revenue since not being able to make transfers, but selling players and, you know, winning Europa Leagues, finishing third, just generally making a lot of money because they're Chelsea. So, fans got excited and elated that Chelsea are just gonna start reeling in Galacticos left, right, and center. Now, it's true, Chelsea do like the idea of signing Timo Werner. It's true, Frank Lampard is a big fan of Jadon Sancho, and that deal may well still come off, but neither are looking lightly in January. Like I've said on this channel before, both respectively are having amazing individual seasons at their German clubs, and neither they nor their clubs would really want to see them go in January. It doesn't really benefit anyone except Chelsea, who'd still be paying over the odds for a January transfer. Chelsea are looking to buy a forward though. Joe Cole said in an interview recently that he believes Chelsea should bring in a striker, but not someone that will undermine Tammy Abraham that would potentially take his first team spot because he's doing very, very well and it does look like he's getting better. So suddenly, Timo Werner puts that under threat, regardless to the fact how you could probably move Timo Werner out wide, but generally he wants to be playing as a centre forward and you create sort of an Aubameyang Lacazette situation. So really this sort of second tier striker becomes more important. We're talking about the Josh Madgers, we're talking about the Moussa Dembele's, we're talking about the Gabby Goals. Now, Gabby Goals interesting, Gabriel Barbosa of Brazil. He is immense, he's scoring, his numbers are absolutely incredible. Uh, I know, granted, it's the Brazilian league, but he's 23 years old, and I maintain the same theory that he would be happy to come to Chelsea as a second striker behind Tammy Abraham, purely on the premise of he's moving to a prestigious club like Chelsea, living in southwest London, getting paid a lot of money, and still getting his chance to show what he can do with a decent amount of minutes on the pitch, and just enough of a high profile caliber player, certainly one that loves in scoring goals all the time, to put Tammy Abraham on his toes, not undermining his position as Chelsea's number nine, but just enough for him to think, oh man, maybe I should, you know, sort of shape up a little bit here. Now, I say that because Frank Lampard always talks about when Michael Ballack signed for Chelsea. He explained it didn't make him concerned, but it made him shape up and want to be better, and he did become better, and he'll be trying to implement that same ethos into his Chelsea side keeping all the players on their toes, letting them know that he's not replacing them, but there's a chance if they don't perform, the guy behind him can absolutely take his place. So Gabby Gold's the right kind of caliber of striker if you ask me. Sure, it will be, I don't know, untested or an unknown quantity in English football, but when you just have the muscle memory and reflexes of scoring that many goals, Sounds good to me. Plus also South American leagues have finished their leagues. Now the, the deal should be easier to get done in January for a European club buying South American players. So there's that. Also really, really important, Gabby Goal is not just a dedicated centre forward. Frank Lampard pushes wide, players wide. Um, I know Tammy Abraham really is a dedicated centre forward. But if he wants to get Gabby Goal and Tammy Abraham on the pitch at the same time, he can because Barbosa can play Centre forward, left, right, even in behind, he's really comfortable playing all across the front. Therefore, he's easy to shoehorn into an attack if Chelsea and Frank Lampard are chasing a goal. Sounds pretty good. Sticking on strikers, I did report on how Chelsea's opening bid for Moussa Dembele has been rejected at £34 million. And that's a lot of money for this striker. And really, I'm not sure he'd be everyone's first choice. I mean, if Chelsea really do see him as the correct player profile as a second striker, then I can dig it. 
but how much more than 34 million and how much better is he going to be than Michy Batshuayi? Batshuayi is an amazing finisher, two-footed, very, very good, great goal scorer. But the recurring theme of Batshuayi is he's not very great tactically, therefore coaches, Conte, Sarri and even Frank Lampard feel like they're losing a lot when he's on the pitch. Moussa Dembele played at Fulham and Celtic, you'd imagine his English is very, very good. Maybe Frank Lampard sees him as an option, someone he can talk to clearly and really put in tactical instruction into his head of how to chase a game or implementing how they want to play against an opponent. So I dig it. If Chelsea think Moussa Dembele is the way to go, then maybe he's the way to go and maybe they're willing to pay up to £40 million for him. Still. Giroud would have to be going out the door, and Michy Bechuai won't like that. He's already said he's happy to be a second striker, probably feeling the pressure right now to not be a second striker and maybe get pushed down to third, at which point I think Bechuai would want to leave. But there's rumours he might go to Aston Villa, hang out with John Terry on loan for a bit. Watch the space, keep it locked to Football Therapy every single day. I'll of course keep you guys updated with these stories. Sticking with the front line, Wilfred Zaha still wants his move to Chelsea. He sacked his agent, rehired a super agent to try and engineer a move to a top four club or certainly a Champions League club. Zaha's preferred destination is Chelsea, but he would cost a lot of money. This is something I've talked about before on Football Therapy. For me, it leaves me in a bit of a unknown spot because I can see he'd offer a lot to Chelsea play between the lines when Chelsea can't break down this low block attack like Chelsea have endured at home at Stamford Bridge this season. Zaha could be that player to wriggle in, do something a little bit different and win a penalty for Jorginho to convert and Chelsea go on to win the game. I see the theory. It works perfectly right. Zaha knows how to play in the Premier League. He knows about the physicality. It all seems like a good idea generally. He brings a little bit more sen seniority in that front line as well. I get it. But it's just the money, isn't it? If Zaha was like 50 million, maybe it would like make a little bit more sense. Pedro and Willian go, you could still bring in a Jadon Sancho next summer and have four decent wingers. You know, but it's the fact how they want 80 million, that's a lot of money. Maybe Chelsea offer them Olivier Giroud in a part exchange, but really, you're not going to get much for Olivier Giroud with six months left on his contract. Especially as he's probably not that much of a valuable player anyway. I know he's won the World Cup and he's decent at what he does, but he's getting on a bit, so... So it's an interesting one, it'll be... Interesting to see how Chelsea fans react if Chelsea do indeed end up with Wilfred Zaha this January. Certainly, it does look like Chelsea are reiterating the concept of signing someone in January. Jody Morris did the pre-match presser for the uh, Nottingham Forest FA Cup game and he pretty much said, yeah, look, we're not just going to sign anyone, we're going to sign people that makes the team better. But you know Chelsea can't necessarily acquire Jadon Sancho or can't necessarily acquire Timo Werner. So who are these people that are definitely going to make Chelsea better? A centre-back? A left-back? Well, at centre-back, Nathan Ake, of course, Chelsea have the buyback clause for £40 million. Apparently, Arsenal want him now as well. They love ex-Chelsea centre-backs, apparently. You can certainly understand why Arsenal would want Nathan Ake, and if they get him for, I don't know, less than 50, 60 million, that would be a good purchase for them, and it could be something they could build on under Mikel Arteta. So Spurs want Ake. Arsenal and Ake, Pep's shown interest, Chelsea have the buyback clause, but they have to move fast because that expires after this month. So is that what Frank Lampard and Jody Morris mean? Do they not believe in their centre-backs that much? And obviously Koulibaly's floating around, but again, that seems like a bit of a waste of money purely because of his age and untested in the Premier League. Does Nathan Ake make that much sense? I mean, maybe. And of course, left back. It does look like an unrealistic immediate target to get Ben Chilwell. Certainly for the money being banded around, world record fee for a left back. Just going to be loads and loads and loads of money. Alex Tellez obviously is a rumoured name who's a very, very good player that's sort of come around the rags recently. Maybe for sale. A little bit older than Chilwell, but maybe realistic acquisition. But then again, Alex Tellez would come with risks as well. Unlike Chilwell and Zaha and Nathan Ake, another player that is untested in the Premier League. And with that, you always take a little bit of risk, especially when you throw them into a team mid-season and you give them no time to acclimatise to the language, country, league, team. When you pay silly January window money, do you really want to take all those risks? But if you ask my opinion, if there's one player that Chelsea could drop in now to plug how they play, 
and will certainly make how they play better and just plug in, it probably would be left back. And if Chilwell is going to be too much money and Alex Tellez is a realistic acquisition, then maybe that is smart from Chelsea Football Club and maybe they should go for that. Anyway, what do you think on all the new stories going around about Chelsea Football Club and potential January transfers? Who do you think would be a realistic acquisition? Who would you like to see? Do you think Chelsea should just hold far and not waste any money? Get down in the comment section below, let me know all your thoughts and opinions. Remember, if you enjoyed the video today guys, please do like the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you can follow me on social media, at Football Yannick, on both Instagram and Twitter, that is at Football Yannick. Oh yeah, if you'd like to see more content by yours truly, please click on the link in the top of the description to go subscribe to my other channel, Yan Plays, a little bit more casual. That's it from me guys, you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.